Okay, we are taking a closer look at the National Crime Records Bureau numbers that are now out and they have reiterated the tag of shame associated with the national capital as far as women's safety goes. Now, Delhi accounted for 32.20% of the total crimes against women amongst all 19 metropolitan cities. Across India, just to give you an overall picture, across India, crime against women has spiked some 15%. There are more numbers uh, that are coming out. Ten years after the Nirbhaya case, Delhi remains the rape capital as well of the country. The NCRB data is revealing that two minor girls have been raped in the capital every day last year. Delhi saw more than 40% rise in crimes against women in 2021 as compared to 2020. It also tops the charts in cases of kidnapping, domestic violence and dowry deaths across all metros. Now, we have done a breakup for you uh, for other metro cities as well. Calcutta, for example, is has been deemed the safest city in, in India. Mumbai, well, it was at one point of time considered very safe for women. Uh, is it losing that sheen? Is it losing that tag? By the numbers that have been put to us, certainly. But before we go to other cities, let's closely look at Delhi. Uh, I have our guests who are joining us. We have Yashuvardhan Azad, who is a former IPS officer. Uh, Lalita Kumar Mara Mangalam is a former chief of the National Commission for Women. Tarna Nandi is an advocate from the Supreme Court. And Shabina Shafiq is, again, an ex-member of the National Commission of Women. Uh, Karuna, can I just quickly come to you first? Uh, what do you make of the numbers that are coming out? We'll talk about other cities in just a bit, but let's talk about the city where you live, which is Delhi. A consistently terrible track record as far as women's safety is concerned, and the numbers are holding up. It does have a very bad track record in Delhi. I think even ANEC data, which is that if you listen to women citizens, whether they are, uh, you know, empowered or not, um, Delhi is not a safe city to be. I think there are two things to remember. Mm -hmm. One is that just because reporting has gone up doesn't mean that crime against women has gone up. Now, this is something to remember across the board. Correct. How do we find out whether reporting reflects increased crime or not. There's lots of evidence to show, including from the National Family Health Survey data and others, other places, that violence did go up during COVID. Mm. Primarily, it went up within the home and uh, domestic violence, etc., which is something that the NCRB data also shows. The second thing is that... Um, there is a survey, the, uh, it's a sort of judicial survey mm -hmm. that the, uh, looked at whether women are going to report, taking the help of, help of the police or not. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, in Rajasthan, people take the help of the police when they are assaulted to a very significant extent. Now, this is not true in many other parts of the country, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be interesting to look at why in Rajasthan this is true. Mm -hmm. um, However, I think that all of this notwithstanding, the fact that report, reporting has gone up is great. The fact that incidents has gone up, and I'm, I'm certain a portion of this will be increased incidents, mm -hmm. is of course terrible. Um, what is being done across the board, across the country? Very, very little. And I think this small incident in terms of numbers, hmm. it's very telling and very representative of what's going on in other parts of the country. The Nirbhaya squad uh, was used to break up protests against the release of the 11 gang rapists and murderers in the Bilkis Manu case. Correct. Correct. Right? Correct. Now, in such a circumstance, where is the political will at the center? Where is the political will at the state level? Why? Is that why are these governments not governing for women? Hmm. Uh, women? Women need to start voting on these issues uh, more significantly. Uh, Yashwadha Nazad, I'm just going to read the numbers out. Uh, they are on our screens for our viewers as well, but I'm quickly going to read them out. Uh, look at what the data is telling us. The data is telling us that from 2020 to 2022, there's been a 42% increase in crime against women in the national capital. Huh? Uh, in fact, Delhi accounts for 32% of all crimes against women in metro cities. It also registers the highest number of cases for kidnapping, domestic violence and rapes in all metros.
help me understand where the failure is. Uh, you know, Karna rightly says that maybe there has been more reporting, and that's a good thing. More women need to come out and report uh, instances of crime against them. Uh, but, but, but the numbers that are coming to us from the national capital uh, are reflective of something larger as well. I'm going to talk about the fact that we are, you, you know, this happened in a pandemic year, and our, across the world we are seeing women being, you know, abused increasingly at homes during the pandemic year. This has been a sort of a global trend. But specifically in Delhi, has there been a failure as far as policing is concerned? Uh, because Delhi can turn around and uh, show you, you know, the rates of registering FIRs and chart sheets and say, look, we've done our job. In 70% cases uh, that, that have come to us, as far as crime against women are concerned, we have registered chart sheets. Beyond this, hum kya kar sakte hai? what can we do? You've already given an excellent executive brief uh, of what is happening in Delhi. I think it's an all-round failure. Mm -hmm. um, you see the failure of the state governments uh, all over. If you see the utilization of the bed funds, only 47% uh, has been used. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, again, failure on the part of the police uh, in, in key areas. You see, uh, the, the issue is really two. There are two issues. One is the prevention, mm. and the other is what happens uh, after the crime is registered. Mm. Now, if you have a, a pathetic record in, in, for the entire criminal justice system, I think there is going to be no deterrence. Then the other part is that uh, you have a an two and a half crores um, uh, population in Delhi, mm. and metros are very, very difficult. There's no uh, problem, but the, uh, there's no, um, uh, you know, uh, issue regarding policing. The most important problems are malls, bus stands, you know, uh, so many various places. Hmm. And I think the police is finding it extremely difficult. Mind you, they had put CCTV cameras and things like that. So there has been some improvement in what I would say investigation. Hmm. And uh, I think now the conviction rate is also about 29%, which is, which is certainly better. Hmm. But the failure is, one, is in terms of numbers. The failures is in terms of uh, uh, proper prosecution because we have a very shoddy prosecution system. Correct. And failure is also because of sheer lack of the forensic infrastructure that we have. Only the other day, the Home Minister has announced mm. that there is going, that we are going to have forensic mobile lab mm. for every district. This should have come about 20 to 30 years back. So I think crimes against women have gone up the reportage is good that it has increased but it's very sad especially one area where the maximum crimes are 32 percent that is cruelty against the maximum. before and this is the national capital we are talking about it makes headlines across the world not just in india uh, mr azad before i move on to other cities and i want to talk about mumbai as well we just want to break this up so that we don't jumble up everything i want to ask you whether uh, we can put this lack of policing, proper policing, down to the fact that the Delhi government and the central government, the Home Ministry, are constantly fighting over who really is in charge in Delhi, that the Delhi police actually reports to the Home Ministry and not to the Aam Aadmi Party government. That constantly has been the complaint of the Aam Aadmi Party, Party government as well. Uh, do you see that fight being reflected in the numbers that we are seeing? See, I, I won't say there is there would be a lot of difference even if they are in sync. You know, uh, for example, Ar Arvind Kejriwal did a good job by putting those CCTV cameras that belong to the state government. Oh. The LG is completely in charge of the police department, mm -hmm. and and you know everything, all the infrastructure, all the resources, everything reportage mm -hmm. is being reported to. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, the entire infrastructure which the police is getting, funds it's getting is from the Home Ministry. Technically, there should be no difference, but the point is, this point of coordination should be there because it brings an all-round all right, all confidence amongst the people, which mm. is not there right now, because mm. every time the LG is finding faults with the government mm. and the government is getting, you know, the counter reaction. So definitely it calls for a better coordination between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to shift our focus to Mumbai now. Uh, and these are the 
figures that have come to us from Mumbai. This is the NCRB data itself. Mumbai, as you know, has always been considered the safest city for women in India, a city where women can roam about at night without having to worry. However, if you look at this data, it's showing that even Mumbai may not be as safe as we believe it to be. Now, the city has reported the highest cases of stalking and the second highest cases of rape amongst all metros in the country. Uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, I want to understand this from you. I, you know, we are putting out figures for Mumbai. Uh, across the world, during the pandemic year, pandemic years, might I say, we have seen that crime against women, especially in their own homes, has gone up. Why, why did that happen? And was it reported as widely as it should have been? Because one of the arguments that has been made is that this was a time when there was the in infection that was spreading, there were lockdowns all across the world, and that made it all the more difficult for women to go out and report crimes against them, especially the ones that were happening in their homes. Yes, that's quite true. Uh, during the COVID epidemic, pandemic, millions of people had also lost their jobs. Mm. Uh, remember, including many, many, many women who work. Mm. Now, economic independence is one of the biggest factors that enhance or increase a woman's empowerment, her mm. capacity to deal uh, for her own form, not just with, mm. for her own safety, and her capacity to be able to withstand the risk of violence of any kind. Uh, during COVID, uh, a lot of women uh, were cooped up at home along with husbands who had also lost jobs, or let's say not just always husbands, but other men in the family. And as you know, uh, when people are frustrated, violence increases. And women and children are always, and I said this for many, many years, the low-hanging fruit, so to speak, in, this, uh, in such situations. Also, the proximity when you're inside four walls, it's very difficult to actually make a phone call or to anybody to talk about it or to complain about it or even to try and avoid it. Mm. Many women uh, whom I have spoken to have taken the brunt of the violence because they wanted to uh, save their children. Mm. And this is a common story across the, across the board. Mm. It has nothing to do with, you know, any other uh, variables. Mm. Women will protect their children as much as they can. Uh, one of the biggest deterrents to complaints uh, being made to the authorities was because, uh, well, everybody is in the same space and not everybody lives in 5,000 square feet houses or has, you know, uh, enough uh, privacy to be able to actually make a complaint. If you're complaining and the person who's actually the perpetrator of the violence is right there next to you, how on earth can you complain? Mm. Uh, women had no access to safe space, let me put it that way, mm. uh, uh, during the COVID epidemic. And there was a huge amount of increase, which was uh, slowly news about that trickled out uh, mm. actually towards the end of the epidemic mm. when uh, cities started opening up. And this is true, I don't think, just in Bombay or Delhi, or it was true for metros across the world, mm. not just in India. Mm. But yes, women did not have enough access to safe spaces mm. during the epidemic. I mean, let's be quite, quite clear, we don't have enough access to safe spaces even without the epidemic having been there or after the epidemic is over. Mm. But especially during the COVID epidemic, because of the proximity that everybody was in, in, especially in families, uh, domestic violence uh, went up uh, hugely and mm. we really got to know about it only later. There were reports, but, you know, it was nowhere near uh, as well known and couldn't be really proven till post uh, when we started getting data like what we've got today. Yeah. And, you know, NCW in any case was reporting that during the first 68 days of the yes. pandemic, their helplines were buzzing. Yes. And they were getting calls. The number of calls they were getting is something that was unprecedented. Uh, quickly, before I come to our next question, let's take a look at why Calcutta, uh, amongst all metros, is being called the safest city uh, in India. Well, that is what the numbers are telling us, that uh, Calcutta has emerged as the safest city. Uh, there have been no cases of attempt to rape that have been registered in Calcutta. The city has reported only 14 cases of rape in 2019. It came down to 11 in 2021. Shabina Shafiq, uh, sh you know, it, it, it'll sound a little unfair that I'm asking this question about Calcutta, but should we take these numbers with a pinch of salt or has something really improved in Calcutta? Is, is West Bengal and Mamta Banerjee doing something so terribly right that these numbers are so low? Or is it just lack of reporting? 
See, obviously, if you go by numbers, then definitely, I mean, things are improving in Kolkata. Uh -huh. And if uh, at all the credit ha has to be taken, it has to be taken by the chief minister of the state and also obviously by the policing system. Uh -huh. And of course, if there are some lessons to be learned by the other state governments, I think so far so good they should to go ahead and try and learn as to what has been happening or rather unlearn what they've been doing in their states because nothing has been improving uh -huh. since 2012 after Nirbhaya. Although we have so many laws in place, there, there were so many changes, radical changes made in laws in IPC sections. There were so many uh, talks about training people. There, were, there was Nirbhaya Fund which was created, but nothing seemed to be changing. But if Kolkata uh, sort of has shown a decline in numbers of reporting of crime against women, especially rape cases, then I think they should be uh, given some kind of uh, acknowledgement for that. But also, we should also see as to why, I mean, uh, is there also a, a, a kind of a phenomena wherein women are still afraid to report the cases which are happening? Because when you are talking about Mumbai or for that matter Delhi, or when, the, when we talk about number of rape cases increasing, mind it, in India, we mm. still are not registering marital rape cases. And when Got we are it. talking about women mm. actually being within the four walls of their houses, then who are these perpetrators? Who are these perpetrators? And why at all these numbers actually went, uh, I mean, so high in some of the cities, mm -hmm. for that matter, Delhi. That mm -hmm. is also one question which needs to be answered. And that is why I always say that actually there is no uh, solution to this problem unless all states come together. Mm -hmm. They talk about the best, best practices they actually follow in their respective states, if mm -hmm. at all they are, mm -hmm. and which have given some results. For that matter, if we can talk about West Bengal or Kolkata right now. And also they should be discussing about what wrongs they've been doing or what unlearning they are supposed to do. Because mind it, when we talk about NCRB data. What is NCRB data? It is actually reporting of crime against women. Correct. I mean, when it's discussing about prevention of crime against women, we are not. Mm. Still, I mean, in the 75th year of independence, we what do we see? We see seven, every 74 seconds there is a crime against women happening in this country. Mm. And is anybody even talking about prevention of crime against women? No, nobody is mm. talking about. And if we see somewhere where the crime rate has gone down, mm. then definitely, definitely we need to study and we need to find out the best practices or for that matter what changes have been made in that particular city or state so that i mean there is some positive result and there is some positive news to for us to hear okay and also, you know but the news uh, the news shamina ji sorry to interrupt you there in the last 20 years has not been positive if you yeah. look at if you study the data and look at the data that has come to us from the national crime record bureau itself for the last 20 years or so it is telling us uh, that uh, sexual crimes against women have actually gone up by 70%, 70%. Lalita ji, would you want to come in here and try and explain why that has happened? Someone who's, you know, studied the issue closely. Uh, you know, any analysis on thoughts on why it has happened in the last 20 years? Uh, I think it's a combination of uh, also reporting that has grown up. Huh. Is oh, it just sorry, reporting? Up. Sorry, not grown up. Uh, uh, partly that, huh. but partly also, I think, uh, I don't know. I think perhaps uh, uh, in the mindset that India has, I don't know, it's such a regressive, such a horrible mindset that, uh, well, uh, we need to, we really don't respect women in our country. But, Let's but be no, very no, clear. Then, it's not just help men, me it's understand also women this. who don't uh, respect women. I understand and that, but help me understand this. Have is, we become, are you saying, ma'am, that we have become more regressive in the last 20 years? That 20 years ago, we weren't think, as regressive as we are today? And that is what the numbers are showing? Probably, but definitely, I, I would like to say something. I strongly feel that, that we seem to have regressed in many ways, especially when it comes to this sort of sexual violence against uh, women. Uh, or perhaps it is just that we are talking about it more. Hmm. Earlier, for 30, 20, 30, 40 years ago, most rape cases were not reported. Hmm. Uh, even now, most rape cases are, I mean, rape is committed by those who are close to the woman, uh, the, the victim whether it's inside the house or by people who know them, etc. Mm. But reporting has increased. And I think at least when reporting occurs, the stigma against rape mm. has decreased. Uh, but data shows that the amount of rape that's happening in numbers, mm. it has gone up phenomenally over the last 20 years or so. Okay. I don't think rape was never not there. Mm. On, a very, on a very, very serious note, uh, but, you know, I really think the regressive mindset that uh, it's not just India. Patriarchy has sort of laid a blanket, almost a deafening, dumbing blanket across the world. It still needs, a, we need to make, make a lot of holes in it to be able to okay. get rid of it. 
Karuna, you wanted to come in here before I go to Seema Khushwaha, who's Nirbhaya's lawyer. Please go ahead. Two things have changed dramatically since 2012. Hmm. One is that people's, as uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam was saying, that women's entitlement to bodily integrity hmm. has increased. Uh, but we do not see in consonance with that a reaction, a sort of reduction, a significant enough reduction in patriarchy mm -hmm. or enough of a change in intervention from the state. Mm -hmm. So what would this result in? Um, this would result, of course, in increased reporting. At the same time, also in 2013, under the Criminal Law Amendment Act that many of us contributed to, the crimes, there were more crimes against women that were then recognized. For example, rape by... Um, other body parts than not just penile vaginal Correct. penetration, rape by objects, etc. Stalking is something that was explicitly recognized. Um, so there are ways in which also, uh, you know, cyber stalking and other kinds of violence against women. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why ostensibly crimes against women have gone up. Now, I think that there are various proxies. There's NFHS data, for instance, which shows that the vast, the most rapes that happen are actually in the context of marriage. Marital rape, as we know, is hmm. something that is, continues to be not specifically criminalized. Correct. And there's a backlash against 498A that has reflected, you know, from so-called Men's Rights Association, that has reflected, I think, in jurisprudence, some of which I deeply disagree with and think is incorrect. Hmm. So the picture is a bit more complicated. I think the good thing is to say that reporting is going up. But I also think that what Shamima Shafiq was saying is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And it's not that people aren't talking about it. People have talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. There are pilot projects that show us that interventions that deal with men and boys at various levels re result in a reduction of violence and a significant one. We know what to do. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. But we have governments that are not making financial allocations, mm. that are using Nirbhaya funds for political purposes, that are using Nirbhaya squads for political purposes mm. to break up protests against rape. Mm. And the priority is not women. Governance is for half the population. Okay. That is the problem. Seema Kushwaha, you, uh, you fought the case for Nirbhaya. At that time, there was much hope that things would improve for women in this country. Uh, but look at what we've seen. We've seen a lockdown for two years. We've seen a health... The world has seen a health emergency like it has never seen before. And yet what women have faced inside their homes has been, has been unfortunate, scary. Uh, but, I mean, how do you look at the numbers that have come out? How do you look at the data that has come out and, uh, you know, contextualize it uh, as far as the Nirbhaya case is concerned, a case that you fought and the country followed so closely? Ma'am, if we talk about 2012, when Nirbhya came with Nirbhya, after Nirbhya case, in 2013, there were recommendations of the Burma Committee and the CRPC, IPC and Juvenile Act. After that, the NCRV data tells us that there is a 30% conviction rate. It means that if you give the amendment in the law, and there is no implementation, 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 law का deterrence, law and order का डर होना चाहिए वो नहीं है। अगर ये नहीं होगा तो वो आपको उसका result नहीं दिखाई पड़ेगा। हाथरस गैंग रेप एंड मर्डर के इसकी बात करें दो साल हो गया है ये मैटर एससीएसटी एक्ट में आ रहा है फास्ट ट्रैक कोर्ट होने के बावजूद भी दो साल में अभी तक इसको डिसाइड नहीं किया गया। अंकिता नाम की एक बेटी जिस कैरोसिन डाल करके जला दिया, लेकिन मैम आप देखेंगे कि इन सब लोगों के अंदर डिटरेंस क्यों नहीं है जो क्रिमिनल हैं, क्योंकि बिल किस बानो जैसे केस में सेवेन परसेंट्स को सेम फैमिली के मर्डर करके उसको गैंगरेप किया जाता है जो कि फाइव मंथ्स की प्रेग्नेंट विमेन हैं उनको रेमिशन पॉलिसी में भी ये प्रोविजन नहीं है कि गैंगरेप एंड मर्डर को आप उनको रेमिशन देंगे उसके बावजूद भी पॉलिटिकल इन्फ्लुएंस से उनको ये बेनिफिट मिलता है तो इस तरीके के जब एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पुलिस हमारा कुछ नहीं बिगाड़ सकती क्रिमिनल का ये लॉ का डर नहीं है दूसरा अगर मैं बात करें कि अगर हम सोशल रिफॉर्म की बात करें मीटू जैसा एक कैंपेन हुआ जिसमें हमारी कंट्री ने ऑल ओवर वर्ल्ड में
जो लोगों के पैटालिकल हिडन माइंड सेट था वो फ्रंट पर रिफ्लेक्ट हुआ बीमेन को एक प्लेटफॉर्म मिला लेकिन उसके बाद आउटपुट क्या निकला अगर हम एनसीआरबी का डेटा की भी बात करें कि बोमेन के अंगेंस्ट क्राइम जो है वो इंक्रीज हुआ 40 परसेंट डेली में बट मैम ये रिपोर्टिंग है एक्चुअल में कितना और आंकड़ा हो सकता है ये हमारे आपके पास नहीं वी डोंट हैव द रियल नंबर्स यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट दिस इज रिफ्लेक्टिव ऑफ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस कंट्री बट दीस आर नॉट द रियल नंबर्स द रियल नंबर्स आर मच मच मोर यस 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 जिसमें पोक्सो एक्ट का मैटर है गैंग रेप का मैटर है कंपनसेशन नहीं मिला है और जो बच्ची जिसके साथ क्राइम हुआ है वो बच्ची के साथ कभी भी प्रोटेक्शन उसको नहीं दिया जा रहा उसका मर्डर भी हो सकता है जब इस तरीके के मैटर्स आते हैं तो एक चीज और रिफ्लेक्ट करती है कि अगर 345 का केस है उसमें कन्विक्शन नहीं है उसमें एक्यूज को बेल है तो वो एक्यूज पर्सन जाकर के अंगेस्ट उस बेटी का मर्डर भी कर रहा उसके साथ गैंगरेप कर रहा और थ्री फोर्टी को हम एक पैटी केसेस समझ करके उसमें कन्विक्शन नहीं करे अगर कन्विक्शन हो रहा है वो टू थ्री फाइव फोर ईयर्स के बाद हो रहा है तो टाइम बाउंड नहीं है जस्टिस तो ये बहुत ही मुश्किल है मुझे okay. लगता है कि अगर सारी चीजों में रिफॉर्म नहीं होगा लॉ का डिटरेंस नहीं होगा इंप्लीमेंटेशन नहीं होगा सोसाइटी में चेंज नहीं होगा तो बहुत ये, मुश्किल ये, है कि ये डेटा जो है वो इसी तरीके से यशोवर्धन आजाद इज इज दैट अ बिग पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम इज वेल एंड आई एम गोइंग टू क्वेश्चन टू आर अदर पैनलिस्ट इज वेल दैट सिग्नलिंग द पोलिटिकल सिग्नलिंग इज ऑल रॉन्ग वेन यू सेट फ्री इलेवन मैन हु हैव गैंग्रेप्ड a pregnant woman gang raped her mother smashed the head of her infant daughter and killed 11 members of her family perfectly fine to let them walk free that's the signal you are sending why will you not see crime against women rise in fact i would say that's a horrendous crime against uh, humanity that remission order mm. but you know let me make three quick points sure you know the jury is still out in the open whether hard punishment mm. uh leads to some kind of a deterrence mm. you know rapes are occurring across uh, uh the world horrific rapes and uh, uh to say that uh, because we had amendment we have we have increased uh, the punishment but you know the basic problem for example is you know for example in calcutta the credit should go to the people not to the police or the political system mm. the culture itself is such and right from the beginning i remember going in school days over there and you would see women traveling all over the entire the environment is different in nagaland for example in northeastern states there's the least uh, lowest report absolutely the best numbers actually coming from nagaland the safest yeah. state in the country for women yeah mm. now the other thing is it's not even a question of lack of funds you know nirbhaya for example in nirbhaya funds you have since inception 6212 crores now out of that only 47% has been used mm. now let me tell you this 47th utilization who utilizes it it is not that the that, that the netas are looking away mm. who manages this these are the bureaucrats mm. right mm. the bureaucrats feel that there are the more important things to do so why get into this problem make scheme schemes etc mm. nirbhaya after nirbhaya you know there were various schemes listed the state governments came up with schemes the central government came up with schemes mm. and it was being monitored through the social welfare development many things safety apps in buses you know alarm signals um a mobile app there are so many things which are done mm. now who is going to look at it one thing is there that the so called our law makers mm. when they have a parliament standing committee meeting in the horn home of his why don't they look at it why don't they see the 47% utilization and sure. why don't they flag the issue in in debates sure now that is a major that is why i was saying that it's an all round failure 
on every front. It, it is an all-round failure on every front. That is, that is simply not debatable. We'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you know, we've covered various points here, uh, and I'm grateful that all of you put in your voice here on what is happening in Delhi, Calcutta, Bangalore, etc., as well, and across the country. Thank you very much, Yashwarthan Azad, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, Karna Nandi, Shamina Shafiq, and uh, Seema Kushwa. Thank you very much for joining us. And